This video is sponsored by nothing. It's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. What's up YouTube, welcome to the first episode of Boss Recap, where we rate boss battles in our favorite video games. I'm your host DMLX, and today we'll be taking on the forces of AIM in Marvel's Avengers, an action RPG released in the unholy year that is 2020, published by Square Enix, developed by Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. Ever since the game's initial reveal back in January 2017, Marvel fans around the globe have been eagerly awaiting the release of this AAA title centered around Earth's Mightiest Heroes. With the promise of being a game set to rival the quality of other beloved superhero titles like the Batman Arkham series, Marvel's Spider-Man for PS4, X-Men Origins Wolverine, and Superman 64. That last one was a joke by the way. And with every new trailer that dropped from Marvel's Avengers showcasing the game's over-the-top combat, intriguing narrative direction, and MCU-like visual style, the game was looking to deliver on all fronts. However, upon the game's launch, Marvel's Avengers was met with fairly mixed critical reception, and ended up being what many feared the game would become, an unfulfilling loot grindfest, cycled with repetitive uneventful missions, and a vast amount of glitches that range from straight laughable to downright game-breaking all the while trying to get players to cash out on overpriced credits to acquire character skins and other cosmetics, with many of the skins being color swapped palettes of one another which ended up being the least visually appealing cosmetics in the game. So far, the only saving grace from Marvel's Avengers is the game's reassembled story campaign that felt on par with stories adapted for the big screen within the MCU, as well as future post-launch free DLC, which is set to include new regions to explore, and heroes to play as like Black Panther, R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman, Hawkeye, Hawkeye again, and even Spider-Man, who was unfortunately exclusive to PlayStation owners for both PS4 and PS5. Sorry Xbox and PC players. Not personal. It's just business. But enough about the game's overall shortcomings and unjustly exclusivity deals, let's suit up and recap the bosses of Marvel's Avengers. As of note, this boss recap will only be focusing on the bosses within the reassembled campaign, not the villain sectors from the multiplayer mode. That's a whole other issue I don't want to get into. With that in mind, according to the game's codex, there are only six bosses to defeat in Marvel's Avengers, with each boss fight taking place in large size arena-like levels, and occasionally specific bosses will be assisted by lower tier enemies as a means to give the player a harder time in defeating the main target. The first boss in the game is Taskmaster. Looking more like a hardcore version of Casey Jones from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Taskmaster aka Tony Masters is an ex-shield agent with a special skill of being able to mimic the physical abilities of his targets, and is now a mercenary for hire offering his skill set to the highest bidder. Then there's Abomination, a former military spy, Emil Blonsky, who volunteered for AIM's Human Gamma experiments which led to him being permanently transformed into an extremely strong and physically imposing iguana on steroids. But unlike his heroic counterpart, the Hulk, he's in full control of his newly enhanced form. Next, we have Monica Rampassini, a co founder of AIM. Monica is a scientist who doesn't have any special powers to combat the Avengers, but instead uses a modified monotronic exosuit designed specifically for subduing superpowered beings, mainly in humans. Then there's AIM's Warbot, originally designed for deep earth mining. AIM eventually decided to weaponize the machine to hunt down inhuman safe houses. AIM's Warship, the Warbot's aerial cousin, was built to enforce order in times of conflict, with the ability to patrol vast areas and withstand attacks from large groups of enemies, as well as equipped with advanced self-healing nanobot technology, making it difficult to take down in combat. The final boss of the reassembled campaign is MODOK. Once Dr. George Tarleton, founder of AIM, he is now Megamind, I, I mean, the mental organism designed only for killing, who believes in science above all else and seeks to replace the superpowered individuals with machines that he alone can control with his mind and in his own twisted worldview, believes he's destined to destroy all the Inhumans and Avengers alike to save humanity. Now when going up against these bosses in the Reassemble campaign, I managed to defeat all 6 bosses on hard difficulty, also known as Challenge 3 in game. As I felt the bosses didn't pose much of a challenge, specifically Taskmaster and Abomination, when playing the open beta on standard difficulty back in August. Overall, most of the boss fights in Marvel's Avengers presented little to no adequate skill or strategy in beating a specific adversary as all the bosses acted as massive damage sponges for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes, with the occasional quick time event to add more cinematic flair on the screen, breaking the pace of the fight to keep players engaged with the task at hand. Also, if you equip the right level gear for each mission, you should have no real issue beating each boss on your first attempt, unless your controller or battery dies mid-fight. That being said, I did find the boss lineup for Marvel's Avengers to be quite underwhelming to say the least, especially when the developers allowed us, the players, to fight against literally half the bosses in the beta. 
Personally, I think the developers could have taken more advantage of Marvel's large population of characters and added at least three to four more Marvel villains under AIM's payroll that would have given the Avengers a run for their hero certification, as well as could have provided more one-on-one -on -one boss fights with heroes and villains of similar skill sets combating one another akin to that of Black Widow vs. Taskmaster and Hulk vs. Abomination. For example, a villain like Graviton, a high council member of AIM in the comics with the power of gravity manipulation, would have been a worthy adversary to go up against Thor one-on-one. -on -one. This type of boss fight scenario could have easily provided players a more engaging gameplay experience in understanding the God of Thunder's moveset and special abilities. Rather than electrocuting various AIM robots that players have already reduced to scrap metal a thousand times in previous missions as other Avengers. Other solid hero vs villain boss fight setups that could have worked within the Reassemble campaign include Captain America going up against Crossbones, or even Iron Man taking on Whiplash. And don't even get me started on the absence of the Super Adaptoid. Honestly, I thought that character was 100% lock as a boss in this game. But I was gravely mistaken and I will hold my L in shame accordingly. Instead we got regular adaptoids that came in 4 variants. Normal, Assault, Cryo, and Adempt. Which were fine additions to the game, don't get me wrong. But it wasn't the same as going up against the Super Adaptoid which would have taken on the powers of all the Avengers. So here's hoping the Super Adaptoid does make an appearance as a boss in future DLC. Generally in the confines of the Reassemble campaign, the boss fights were set up quite well in terms of narrative importance and were most fun when fighting against iconic Marvel supervillains. Sadly, the lackluster lineup of bosses left little to be desired when looking at each boss's combative performance and challenge, especially when defeating the Warbot, the Warship, and Monica in her exosuit. As those missions were the precursor to Marvel's Avengers repetitive slash unfulfilling post-campaign multiplayer modes. Also, for whatever reason, the developers decided to not have the campaign be replayable unless you start up a new game file. Which means if you wanted to replay those boss fights from the campaign, you have to delete all your progress on your original playthrough and start all over again. Yikes. Even Destiny wasn't that harsh. So on the tier scale of video game boss fights, I'm giving Marvel's Avengers a C. When looking at our boss token awards, the Soulsborne award for the hardest boss fight goes to Monica Rapacini. As I found her encounter to be the most annoying to deal with due to her use of different elemental attacks and summoning minions to her aid forcing me to use Black Widow more conservatively than I liked. The Great Mighty Pooh Ward for worst boss fight goes to the Warbot, due to the giant Beetlezord's extreme lack of mobility and predictable attack patterns. The Bowser Jr. Ward for the easiest boss fight goes to Abomination, with the Hulk being the simplest Avenger to use in combat and the Abomination possessing easily telegraphed attacks, making this fight without a doubt one of the least stressful moments in the game. The Golden Pickaxe Award for the most creative boss fight goes to MODOK, as this encounter showcases MODOK's full potential as an Avengers level threat, with the game allowing us players to take control of all 6 Avengers, each getting their moment to shine in the climactic finale, with Black Widow getting what I believe to be the hardest portion of the fight. The ultimate showdown award for best boss fight goes to the first boss of the game, Taskmaster. Even though this fight took place during the prologue slash tutorial section of the game, this boss fight perfectly set up the tone for what I expected the game to turn out to be. A good balance of entertaining cinematics, satisfying combat, and a fresh take on the beloved Marvel Universe. And there you have it, that's the first episode of Boss Recap. Let me know what you guys think about the new series in the comment section down below, and let me know what games you'd like to see me cover next. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, it really helps me out, subscribe for more content from me on the Boss Recap. I'm Dimalex, I'll see you in the future.